Hey everybody, welcome back to Omega Zone Gaming. Great to be back, great to be back with a new review. So today's first review is Blue Reflection. What do you get when you take Koei Tecmo, the people behind Dynasty Warriors, have them make a turn-based RPG, and combine it with Persona meets Solar Moon? It sounds like a coke-fueled nightmare, generally, doesn't it? But it's actually one of the best games I have ever played, uh, real, for turn-based RPGs, anyway, realistically. I will say, low times are a bit hit or miss. So, let's go into the main menu here. You play mainly as Hanako. She's a former dancer who injured herself, and more than anything, she wants to go back to dancing. During her first day at her new school, she gets wrapped up into this thing where she's drugged into the collective consciousness of people. So, to surmise this collective consciousness normally is okay it works well unfortunately sometimes people go what they call rampant in this game which means they are letting their emotions out at a higher output and monsters within inside the collective area are attracted to these emotions she vows to stand by her new two new comrades yuzu and lime after they explained that one wish can be granted for those who help save the planet from this collective uh, conscious outbreak. And her wish, of course, will be to dance again. Or at least that's the setup as of now. So, like Persona, half of the gameplay takes place in high school. The other half takes place in the collective conscious area. Uh, you have a cell phone which has table chat, which allows you to chat with all your sub characters. The jukebox, Star Cave, which is sort of like a Tamagotchi that you can raise, and wallpaper. Nothing too impressive. So you also have a map. You can instantly drop away from other areas if need be. I'll show you that now so we get up here and she's in trouble she's going rampant so now we're going to go into the dungeon-esque area of the game So as you can see, it's got the Solar Moon, Solar Scout motif. The story bases itself around person's emotions quite a bit. And that's really good for the story. Uh, especially for Hanago. She starts out as a aggressive character who really doesn't care about anybody. But she grows as... She gets, you know, more powerful within the game and realizes that people need her. I, for one, love this story. I, it's simplistic, yes, but it does work, and it works well. I'm going to give the story a 5 out of 5, straight up. Okay, so this is the dungeonscape area. We're going to be entering it. As you can see, it looks really, really insanely different. Uh, and they do in different areas, too. This is more like a swampy area, which I like. Okay, so. As you can see, everything's clean and crisp. Uh, it does run at 60 frames. Uh, that's something new I haven't seen before, but I like it. I like how you can turn the camera and the lighting changes. It's something I didn't notice. 
so as you can see the skirts and stuff they move with the characters you can also travel to different areas of the map through portals and they give you really good close-ups onto the characters and enemies it uses a similar to Final Fantasy X or World of Final Fantasy grid system. You can charge single or multiple items, I mean, uh, monsters for attack. Of course, when you do that, you get pushed further back. As you can see, it is really flashy. It is set up to be really flashy. And yes, there are breast physics. So, when a battle ends, you go into this result screen, uh, which is really gives you a good close up of the character and their outfit. You can see the gleam on their gloves and stuff like that. You can also see some shadowing in the background if you notice. And it gives you your dropped items area. Overall, I love these graphics. They're simplistic, but at the same time, they they pop. It's it's that ground where it's not a AAA game, but it's also not a you know indie game. It's that ground where they have development power, but they used it in such a way to where they built upon the graphics. So graphics, I give a five out of five. I love the way this game looks. It may not be persona levels of impressiveness but it does draw you okay so audio so when it comes to the audio of this game the music are j popish type tunes they obviously were going for that There's also relaxing world traversal tunes, so you get a good mix. The voice acting is all in Japanese. So if during story marks, you have no desire to, you know, read, this game's probably not going to be for you. But I will say the voice acting for the characters is bloody brilliant. It's some of the best I've ever heard. So for me, and the fact that you get sounds that accompany attacks and stuff like that, for me, the audio gets a 5 out of 5. It's great audio. It's fantastic audio, in fact. Okay, so, on to gameplay. First, the menu. You have an items area. So, items are mostly used for crafting. You can use some to heal outside of battles. Can't use them in battles, but outside of battles, absolutely. Uh, missions, which I can't use while I'm in the zone, but usually during your day you have missions to meet with people and stuff like that. A big part of this is sort of taking from Persona where you build friendships, which is a great aspect of the game. Uh, it even plays more though because you actually get very, very detailed cutscenes where they'll be cooking something or, you know, they'll be doing what friends really do. It's not like with, say, some of the characters in Persona 5. Well, I love Persona 5. You would go out with them and go and just, you know, sit on a bench and talk. No, you don't get anything like that here. You you get what real teenagers would be doing. Maybe not necessarily cooking, but the fact of the matter is, you know, they play sports. Your first real f rival friend wants to challenge you in sports, and since she can't do, Hanako can't do much in sports, she chooses swimming, and they actually have this great bonding moment over swimming. Now, you have a status bar, which will show you the status of your character. 
Okay, so while I'm in this menu, growth and fragments. So growth is represented by points, which you can put into four fields. This is how you will learn different techniques, different attacks, different defense items, and healing magic. So, and there's actually a show area to show you how many points are required in each to learn each one. And each character has this. Then there is fragments. So when you complete a quest or a mission, you'll get a fragment about the person's emotion. You can pull, put these in to have more status effects, uh, do more damage, stuff like that. Uh, so I got Aether Strike, which I got from Kay when I did the whole swimming thing with her. Her power is to increase skill po power when Aether is 50% or more. So if my Aether is at 50%, I do more damage with a certain skill. Uh, let's see. Fear of Change, which increases the target's defense for a certain period of time. So as you see, that's how you grow in this game. Now, you have a database too, which will give you your monster information. I wish this was more detailed. I wish the detail they put into the rest of the graphics were detailed into this book as well. Uh, items. I hate, hate, hate that the items are so bland looking. I wish they at least had the detail of the demons page. And glossary, which gives you information on story and stuff like that. And what terminology is what and all that good, you know, usual stuff. And tells you about each of the zones as well. And then, of course, there's the usual help that gives you the battle fun fundamentals and all that stuff. Then you have your settings, which you can adjust your BGM, all that stuff. You know, audio, basically. Vibration, text audio, advance. Uh, whether you can skip an event or not. Your camera stuff. And then difficulty, which I'm guessing, yep, you can change at any point. I'm playing on easy now because I just want to get through the story. Uh, that, and there's a very important reason in the gameplay department. This is my one big flaw with the gameplay. You don't feel rewarded for combat. If you're going to just do the story and not worry about fighting anything and try to escape every single time, by all means, knock it up to hard. But... If you want to still play the combat, you can, and I recommend Easy or Normal for that because this sort of has a Lightning Returns vibe where you don't earn experience for killing monsters. You earn experience for completing quests and missions. So, that is the one negative. Okay, so, in combat now. As I mentioned earlier, you have a, what they call the timeline. It's sort of like the grid from World of Final Fantasy or Final Fantasy X that moved your characters up. That showed who gets to go first. So you have multiple options. One I obviously haven't unlocked yet. You have Attack, Overdrive, Ether Charge, Support, Escape. Support is support abilities like Magic Increase, Attack with a Raised Sword for that one. Attacks, you have multiple attacks. Sell more ace being your base slash, which will cost you no ether. Every other attack will cost you ether of some much though. So much though. Overdrive, which puts you into an overdrive mode. Now you can only use this at certain times right now, and I believe all your characters have to have a certain amount of uh, ether built up. And then you have ether charge, which is Increases your ether if you're low on ether, since you can't use items. Escape allows you to escape from battle. So, we'll start with a base attack. You see how much that knocks me back. So, let's exit out again. I'm in the attack section on the timeline. Selmo Ace knocked me back. Five. I'm going to attack with it. So, it's a basic attack. Then you have special attacks. Let's use Strawberry Comet, which targets multiple characters.
Now, what knockback does in this game... See if she can do a knockback right now. So he was weak, so he died. But what knockback does is essentially uh, cancels out movement and knocks an enemy back. Hopefully he survives. He did not, but I did score a knockback. So what that would normally do is actually knock your character or the opponent back. You can work both ways and knock them further down the timeline, which can either benefit you or hurt you. you gain dropped items, which you can use for crafting. Uh, for a while, you get this invincibility. So that's a plus. Combat, unfortunately, I have to dock a point off of. The reason why is the leveling system. If they get to do a sequel to this, I would love if they put an actual leveling system. Because then you feel like you've earned something for killing monsters in the game. So, combat for me gets a 4 out of 5. And that is the only reason why. If it was if the leveling was a normal leveling system, this would be... A 5 out of 5 on the combat. There is no online options. And one thing that I will say is totally freaking disrespectful. And under no circumstances by this part of it is there is a $70 season pass for all the costumes. In other words, swimsuits and short cut t-shirts that you can make the characters wear if you want to perv out of it. Don't spend that 70 bucks. There's one special event. One. And they're charging 70 bucks. If it comes down on reduced price to $15, by all means, because buying them all separately would be about 100 bucks. But under no circumstances, give them $70 for that season pass. So we gave everything but combat a 5 out of 5. Story got a 5 out of 5. Audio got a 5 out of 5. Graphics got a 5 out of 5. Story uh, Gameplay got a 4 out of 5. Blue Reflection gets a 5 out of 5 from me. Even with that 4 out of 5 on combat. If you are looking for a new turn-based RPG, you finish Persona 5 and World of Final Fantasy, and you need something new to wet that palette for turn-based, this is the game to do it with. Especially if you're a fan of the Persona-esque friendship-building stories, as well as anything Magical Girl like Sailor Moon or Card Captors. This has that in there. I fully recommend and endorse this game. I do not endorse the season pass, but I fully recommend and endorse this game. I do say it's worth the 60 bucks. Uh, you pay for it. It will get you several, several hours in the base tutorials. I think I've seen playthroughs that have lasted a total of 40 plus hours. And I'm not sure how many hours I am in. I'd say I'm probably about seven. And I'm only up to like chapter two or three. So the gameplay is worth it. Minus no leveling. Traditional leveling system. I should say. The story is definitely worth it. The music is fantastic and the graphics are gorgeous. They're not Persona 5 levels of gorgeous, but if you can turn off your filter to Persona 5 is the best looking JRPG of all time for turn base, you'll love the look of this game. So, I will be back later tonight with a review of Tokyo Xanadu. I am getting really into the JRPG stuff again. Uh, and then, I am also going to be working on a Mafia 3 review here soon. Uh, I haven't gotten too far into Mafia, and Mafia is an open world GTA clone, so you guys are going to have to give me time with that one, but it will be coming. Until next time, this is Omega Zone Gaming. Like if you like, subscribe if you want, comment if you feel the need, and as always, everybody, have a good one, and I am out.